It's not her I want. If you're too dumb to save yourself, there's no sense dragging her down with you. In assembling the cast for the 1973 movie The Sting, the casting process was meticulous and intriguing. Each key actor was chosen after a series of auditions and chemistry tests to ensure the perfect fit for their role. Paul Newman was selected for his suave charm and acting prowess, while Robert Redford's charisma and on-screen presence landed him his role. The chemistry between these two leading men was palpable during their screen tests, solidifying their casting. For the role of the cunning crime boss, Robert Shaw stood out with his commanding presence and depth of character interpretation. These pivotal moments defined the casting choices, leading to a stellar ensemble that brought the movie to life. Okay, I better get on the phone to New York. See what the big Mick wants to do about it. In creating The Sting, the director brought a unique vision to life by drawing on creative influences that shaped the film's style. Collaborating closely with the cast and crew, the director employed a blend of classic storytelling techniques and innovative cinematic approaches to craft a timeless piece of cinema. The director's fusion of old-school charm with modern storytelling prowess resulted in a masterful film that captivated audiences worldwide. Throughout the production, the director maintained a keen focus on authenticity and attention to detail, working alongside the talented cast and crew to ensure every aspect of the film reflected the vision at hand. By seamlessly blending these elements, the director was able to bring the sting to life in a way that continues to resonate with viewers decades later. I think you guys been passing bad money lately. In 1973, The Sting hit the screens, a classic that blends humor, shocks, and sadness. Have you seen this gem yet? There are lesser known tales that may amaze you. Share your fond memories below. We're eager to hear them. So, did you know? Years ago when you decided to be somebody. Believe me, I've seen enough to know. Ten. During the production of the 1973 movie, The Sting, the set design aimed to recreate the 1930s era with meticulous attention to detail. Various locations in Chicago were used to give an authentic backdrop to the story, showcasing the city's atmosphere during that period. Logistical challenges included coordinating large-scale scenes involving multiple actors and extras, all while maintaining the historical accuracy of the film. One innovative technique employed during production was the use of hidden cameras to capture more natural reactions from the cast. This allowed for a sense of spontaneity and realism in the performances, adding depth to the characters and their interactions. Additionally, the filmmakers utilized creative lighting techniques to evoke the film noir style of the era, enhancing the overall mood and atmosphere of the movie. The attention to detail in set design, the choice of authentic locations, and the innovative use of technology all contributed to making The Sting a visually captivating and memorable film that continues to be cherished by audiences to this day. They were all set 21. Set in the 1930s, this classic film revolves around two con artists, Johnny Hooker and Henry Gondorf, who devise an elaborate scheme to con a wealthy mobster. The story unfolds with clever twists and turns, showcasing the art of deception and the intricate planning that goes into a successful con. The film is notable for its engaging plot, which keeps viewers on the edge of their seats as they follow the characters through a web of lies and tricks. The chemistry between the lead actors adds depth to the narrative, making their friendship and partnership feel genuine. The film also features a vibrant depiction of the era, with its stylish costumes and set designs that transport the audience back in time. The music plays a significant role, enhancing the mood and complementing the unfolding drama. As the characters navigate their dangerous game, themes of trust, betrayal, and revenge emerge, making the story not just about the con itself, but also about the relationships that develop along the way. The film's clever writing and direction contribute to its status as a beloved classic, appealing to both fans of the genre and those new to it. I gave the producer a C note. Did you find out the deck? Mm -hmm. He usually plays with a tally -ho fan or a tally -ho circle. The music in the movie, The Sting, was carefully crafted to enhance the storytelling and emotional impact of the film. Composers Marvin Hamlish and Scott Joplin worked together to create a soundtrack that perfectly captured the mood of the 1930s setting. The ragtime music, composed mainly by Joplin, added a playful and lively feel to many scenes, creating a sense of fun and excitement. Hamlish then arranged and adapted these ragtime pieces to fit the various moments in the film, 
adding depth and richness to the overall sound. The music perfectly complemented the fast-paced narrative, adding tension and building suspense where needed. Overall, the score and soundtrack of The Sting played a crucial role in immersing the audience in the world of the movie and enhancing their viewing experience. Do a lot worse. In a clever nod to a famous comic strip, characters in the movie greet each other with references to Mutt and Jeff, setting up a good cop-bad cop routine. Following its theatrical release, the film achieved a record share of the television audience, reaching a significant milestone. A series of practical jokes ensued between Paul Newman and George Roy Hill after a friendly drinking session. Newman's bill for eight and the subsequent chainsaw incident led to a playful but costly exchange. Universal Studios later billed Newman 800 for the desk damage, which he never paid. The film features a number of iconic scenes that leave a lasting impact on the audience. One standout moment is the intricate con that unfolds in the grand finale. The direction by George Roy. Hill masterfully sets up the tension and anticipation, allowing viewers to engage deeply with the character's cunning schemes. The chemistry between Paul Newman and Robert Redford enhances the performance as their playful banter and shifting dynamics draw the audience into their world. The cinematography plays a crucial role in this classic, with sweeping shots of 1930s Chicago and close-ups that capture the subtleties of deceit and friendship. The soft color palette and vintage style transport viewers back in time, creating an immersive experience. Commentary from the filmmakers reveals that they aim to evoke a nostalgia for classic caper films while infusing it with clever twists. Each scene builds upon the last, leading to a climactic reveal that is both surprising and satisfying. The musical score complements the film's playful tone and enhances the emotional weight of the moments, further engaging the audience. Through its intricate storytelling and visual style, this aged piece beautifully captivates and entertains. He had you down as a big timer. What happened? Just before Elizabeth Taylor was to present the Best Picture Oscar, streaker Robert Opal ran across the stage to David Niven's surprise. Niven humorously commented on Opal's antics. This event inspired singer Ray Stevens to create a chart-topping song called The Streak. Tragically, Opal was later found murdered in San Francisco. In the film, Paul Newman's character uses the name Shaw while playing poker with Doyle Lonigan, portrayed by Robert Shaw. Lonigan mistakenly addresses Newman as Mr. Shaw during the game. Kathleen Freeman, a renowned actress, has appeared in several significant films, including The Sting, selected by the Library of Congress for its cultural value. She has contributed to various iconic movies over the years. Smoke and doesn't chase names. He's a grand knight in the Knights of Columbus and he only goes out to play Pharaoh. Some the Sting, a 1973 film, had a significant impact on culture and society. Audiences were captivated by its clever storytelling and charismatic characters, resonating with viewers of all ages. The movie's portrayal of con artists pulling off elaborate schemes influenced pop culture by inspiring similar themes in later films and TV shows. The Sting also contributed to discussions on trust, deceit, and loyalty, prompting viewers to think critically about these social and cultural themes. Its success paved the way for more intricate and engaging storytelling in cinema. The Sting continues to be a classic example of how a well-crafted film can leave a lasting impression on society. Maybe a couple of million. Robert Redford has starred in 11 period pieces throughout his career, showcasing his talent in films like Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid, The Natural, and Out of Africa. He was initially set to appear in another film, but he withdrew from the project because he felt the character was too much of a loser. This decision disappointed director Sidney Lumet, who had to replace him with his friend Paul Newman. Newman went on to receive an Oscar nomination for his performance. In the film, the characters Gondorf, Hooker, and Lonigan arrive in Chicago on the 20th Century Limited train. They exit at the LaSalle Street station, which served as the train's Chicago terminus until it closed in 1967. The original station was demolished in 1981, making way for a modern skyscraper. However, a new commuter station now operates at that location, serving Chicago's Metro commuter service. The film captures a unique moment in time, blending historical elements with engaging storytelling.
The Sting, a 1973 film, was met with critical acclaim upon its release. Critics praised its engaging storyline, witty dialogue, and stellar performances by the cast. Audiences were equally captivated by the movie, with many lauding its blend of humor, suspense, and clever twists. The film's success with both critics and audiences led to several prestigious awards and nominations. The Sting won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director for George Roy Hill, and Best Original Screenplay. These accolades not only solidified the film's reputation as a classic, but also brought recognition to the talented individuals involved in its making. The awards and positive reception of The Sting have undoubtedly elevated the careers of those who worked on the film, establishing their talents in the industry, and setting a high standard for future projects. The film's enduring popularity and critical acclaim continue to highlight the exceptional craftsmanship that went into creating this cinematic masterpiece. In the Western Union office, Kid Twist placed a family photo with Kathleen Freeman as the wife. Leonard Barr, a comedian in this classic, also appeared in Diamonds Are Forever. Robert Shaw, seen in From Russia with Love with Sean Canary as Bond, portrayed Grant. Initially, Richard Boone was considered for the Lonigan role. Oliver Reed declined the test, but later played Lonigan in the sequel. Stephen Boyd was also a candidate. Kelly? During the filming of The Sting, the cast and crew faced an unexpected obstacle when a fire broke out on set. Despite the chaos, they worked together to ensure everyone's safety and managed to resume filming shortly after. Additionally, there was a memorable moment when Robert Redford and Paul Newman, the film stars, improvised a key dialogue scene, adding a touch of spontaneity and authenticity to their performances. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes offer a glimpse into the challenges and creativity that shaped the making of this classic movie. She was a real professional. He used to work in a Dutch Schultz bar. In a card game scene in the movie, the characters play cribbage, a game where a hand is played to 31. The tune Listen to the Mockingbird is heard during a pivotal moment in the film. The movie heavily features Scott Joplin's ragtime music, creating a unique atmosphere. Despite being set in the 1930s, the choice of music from an earlier era adds a playful touch to the story. This classic film's impact extended beyond entertainment, influencing Scott Joplin's recognition, leading to his Special Arts Pulitzer Prize. The music's popularity even inspired the production of a biographical film about Joplin. Suits over there. Pick yourself out a nice tweed one. That's all right. I've got all my own stuff. The Sting, released in 1973, holds a significant place in film history for its clever storytelling and memorable performances. This classic has had a lasting influence on future filmmaking, particularly in the realm of caper and heist genres. Its intricate plot twists and charismatic characters set a standard for heist films that followed. The Sting also inspired a new wave of movies that incorporated elements of deception, con artistry, and unexpected twists, shaping the way filmmakers approach storytelling in this genre. Its legacy continues to be felt in modern cinema as filmmakers pay homage to its style and narrative techniques. The Sting remains a timeless piece of cinema that continues to captivate audiences and inspire filmmakers to this day. I'm dead. It don't look good, Gramps. It's almost four now. I'll give you and your friend a hundred bucks to deliver it for me. Incorporating 1930s stylistic techniques, the film begins with a vintage Universal logo and features editing wipes and iris shots for scene transitions. Warren Beatty declined the role of Johnny Hooker. The Italian censorship visa number 64113 was issued on 6 March 1974. You can trust me. Hey, hey. In Edith Head's biography, it's mentioned that Paul Newman and Robert Redford, who both have blue eyes, wanted their shirts to be blue to highlight their eyes. However, there is uncertainty about whether this is true. Newman wears blue overalls only in the carousel scene with the rest of the film featuring him in a mix of brown and white shirts, and later exclusively in a white shirt and dinner jacket, Redford sporadically wears a blue shirt. The filming of a train scene in New York was actually done at Chicago's Union Station. Paul Newman's portrayal of Frank Galvin in The Verdict is acclaimed as one of the top performances of all time by Premier Magazine. Could be. Robert Redford expressed concerns about his role in the film, feeling he was just running around rather than acting. 
As a joke, the director gifted him a sculpture of the Road Runner inscribed with, If you can't be good, be fast. The Big Con by David W. Maurer inspired this classic, originally published in 1940, and later reissued in 1999. Redford's Best Actor Oscar nomination was unique that year, being the only one in the category among Best Picture nominees. Immersing himself in blues music from the 1930s and 40s, David S. Ward penned the script for this classic. Paul Newman, relying on the GI Bill, navigated his early months at Yale University. To finance the rest of his education, he peddled Encyclopedia Britannica, excelling in sales. Director George Roy Hill aimed for an unfamiliar face to depict Robert Redford's romantic interest, Loretta, in the movie, despite concerns about her looks. Demetra Arliss secured the role after Hill championed her to skeptical Universal executives. Now I figure you're under the score was at least three Gs. I want two. Robert Redford didn't watch the film until June 2004. Adjusting for inflation, the 11,000 from the movie would be around 23,000 in 2020, and approximately 35,000 in 1973. Man o' War, a renowned racehorse from the early 20th century, is mentioned in the movie as having behavioral issues. Despite his short two-year racing career in 1919-1920, he remains a legendary horse in history. For Christ's sake, did you hear that? The Iger sanction was initially planned as a project for Paul Newman. The movie became the fourth highest grossing film globally at the time, earning $156 million. Following The Exorcist released the same week, filming on location with Paul Newman and Robert Redford posed challenges due to the massive crowds that gathered, likened to the Beatles' frenzy in 1964. Observers marveled at the intense fan reactions, with comparisons to Sinatra's heyday in New York. Despite the overwhelming attention, Newman and Redford stayed focused on their work and did not let the fanfare distract them. During the filming of this classic, Paul Newman played a prank on Robert Redford by hiding his Porsche, which left Redford thinking it had been stolen as both actors cherished their cars deeply. Newman replicated a hangover cure from a previous movie, filling a sink with ice water and immersing his face in it. Additionally, Paul Newman starred in two of the American Film Institute's 100 Most Inspiring Movies, Cool Hand Luke at Hash 71 and The Verdict at Hash 75. On a corner waiting with some friends. He won't know you're carrying it. Come on, you gotta help me out. Hey, I'm sorry, pal. Have you ever watched The Sting, the iconic 1973 movie? Share your experiences and memories of this classic film with us. Tell us how it influenced your perspective on cinema or impacted you personally. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Engage with us by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more cinematic explorations. Your input is valuable, so let us know your story connected with this timeless film. Joy flag, $6.420. Redley paid three.